Here we are at Gooding's auction here at Amelia Island. Two six footers making an excellent, excellent introduction to this. Two six footers. Not quite. Joe Bradley. That's, that's the closest to CGI we're going to come to. <laughs> <laughs> Stepping up to a step. Yeah. This is, uh, this is an amazing auction we've seen here. Paul, I worry. I worry for myself walking around a place where we've just had a, a, a lovely afternoon walk. Um, I, it's just the Euro lottery doesn't have enough win, winning money. I, I've already spent 150 million in there. What a fantastic! I mean, as as an enthusiast like you and I are, just being able to be among the cars that we have walked among is quite a quite a privilege. And uh, for it to be allowed in there to have a look at what's going to be auctioned tomorrow was was quite something. It really was, and it was nice to see everything that was in there. And for me, there are some things which go back to my heritage, my early days of sports car racing. The Porsche 935 is always going to be right up there. Absolutely. It dominated IMSA uh, here in America. It was pretty successful in Europe, and it was pretty successful at Le Mans. And the price tag on that 935 is upwards towards $2 million dollars. I mean, who would have thought that when we saw those cars going around the late 70s, that those cars in 30, 40 years' time were going to be worth that amount of money? Because fundamentally, they are a race car under there. Very much so. And I think the thing for me with that one is it doesn't really have much history. I mean, it's not, uh, it's not a car that's, that's been all over the world driven by famous people. It was, a, to all intents and purposes, a club racing car. And that, uh, to see that with a $2 million expectation is quite something. But there's quite a few other things there as well, aren't there? We've got an iconic liveried 962C. Uh, the names of Wayne Taylor and Franz Con Conrad are on there with Georges Fouche um, having um, 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 competed in that car. Um, it needs a little bit of work doing to it, Paul. The, the trained eye would say it's not, you know, the fact that it's a Leighton House Porsche 962, though, <laughs> and has a bit of provenance. You know, my money was straight down on the table, and it, or it will be, down on the hammer tomorrow, if only. Yes, uh, well, somebody's money will, yes, be. It will be. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, any 962, and obviously here at Amelia Island, we're going to see. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what the collective noun for uh, Porsche 962s is, but let's let's stick with a plethora of 962s on the show field later this weekend. But here we've got we've got that car, we've got Ferraris, we've got uh, AC Cobras. How about that? The AC Cobra is something that I almost lost it and became a gibbering fool in there. Um, There's no we're, change there. We're, there, there isn't. <laughs> Define what you mean, uh, Bradley. Um, unfortunately, we can't take you in there. We would have loved to have taken you in there. We're not allowed um, for obvious reasons. You know, people are actually going to be spending real money on these cars in there. I, Paul, I'm not eloquent enough to describe just how beautifully restored and prepared that Cobra was. Yeah, and they've, there, there are the two in there. There's the 7 litre and the 4.7. And I think, for me, who knows? I mean, I, I, could, I could wax lyrical about the, the 7 litres with the big arches and everything else. The 4.7, that little 4.7 litre Cobra looks absolutely fantastic as well. Still the big arches, but not quite so big. Continuing on the racing theme, I, I was taken with the uh, Ferrari Challenge car, the 355 Challenge car. It's in Tommy Hilfiger colours, and it actually ran in the, uh, the uh, as IMSA was called then, as the sanctioning body of American racing, sports car racing that is. It's got the sports car sticker on there, owned by one Lawrence Stroll. Now, Lawrence has got a bit of a racing heritage. He's the father of Lance Stroll, current Formula One driver, but also the new owner of, uh, of Racing Point, the new Formula One team that's taken over Force India. They'll be, they'll be going into their, their new first season uh, very shortly, won't they? So there's a bit of heritage in there. I have to say, well done for that remembering Racing Point, <laughs> because I wouldn't have remembered it. I'm, I'm still back with Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a lot of cars across the hammer we talked to charlie ross earlier on who's going to be auctioning auctioneering auctioning these cars and that he says something like 15 cars an hour across the board a lot of money in an hour and didn't he say also that if he if he sped that up he wouldn't be giving the cars the justice of you know the potential of, of what the cars are worth giving the the, the buyers uh, a little bit more time to, to make that to, to you know to think about how much they're going to pay for a particular car one that does come to mind when i'm thinking about the value of cars we've got a, an audi quattro sport in there a road car not a not a race car but a road car certainly with a lot of competition heritage it dominated 
started rallying in the 80s. But that car, about 10 years ago, was worth about $10,000. It's got a price tag on it there of $50,000. <laughs> Paul, what we need to do is we need to look around this car park outside the auction. Just think of the car that's going to be worth 50 grand in 30 years' time and maybe buy it now for 10 grand. That's the thing to do. If you can do that, it'll make us both a lot of money. So uh, on that note, I think we'll go out and see what we can do.